I'm going to introduce us tonight to four seasons of warfare. Any man who intends to bear the mark of God in his generation will go through four principal seasons of warfare. Any man who attempts or intends to bear the mark of God for his generation will have to experience. Number one, the season of planting. You are writing right down quickly. The season of planting. Jesus. I sense in my spirit there is a stirring in this place. The spirit of men are being troubled like a troubled water. The Holy Ghost is initiating new seasons, new consciousness, new realities. There's a troubling of the waters. There's a troubling of the waters. Stories are about to change. Hey! Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Yes! Yes! Listen. Listen, if you can. We see everywhere in scripture that Satan does not play with seeds. He has strategies to master seeds. Some of it, the sparrows, the ravens will pick it. Meaning that it is almost like it's an aborted destiny. Never found expression. Some of it will land on stony grounds, having no capacity to yield. Some of it, again, will enter places where there are thorns, so it will choke the capacity of the seed from bearing fruit. We have seen over and over again that there is an elaborate procedure to stop seeds from attaining their true capacity. So, the fact that you are a seed, it says, Hi, I have planted you. Jeremiah chapter 4. It says, I have planted you a noble vine, wholly a right seed. How art thou turned into a degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? So he says, you were planted a noble vine. You are part of the nobles. You were sent into time as a royal. He says, you are a right seed. So there is no question as regarding the pattern from your father, the mistake of your mother. He says, the seed that entered is a quality seed. We are trying to explore what Satan does in that season of planting. Meanwhile, among these four seasons, I will give you very briefly because I will run through it. Your greatest warfare will be in season one and season four. Between season one and season four, you had two other seasons with warfare equivalent, but not as much as the planting and the season of harvest. It's, if you follow me this night, somewhere along the line of this teaching, you will find where you, you are, which season? The planting. The planting. <laughs> if you knew how many angelic support it takes to escort one being to arrive at time, just to arrive, the devil's plan, they have made it elaborately clear. The thief cometh to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I wondered for some time why did they distinguish between killing and destroying? What, is it not the same thing? They are trying to show you that the layers of wicked venom that he sustained towards anybody who enters time bearing the message of the Lord. This is why not too many people live up to expectation. Not too many people end up fulfilling the will of God for their life. Not too many people are present although you are alive. The roll call of Zion does not count that you are alive yet. The moment they start counting is when that seed germinates. Even in physical, because everything in the natural communicates way more spiritual truths. In the natural, there are conditions that makes for germination. You don't, just, you don't just plant a seed anywhere and think it will germinate. Part of what is necessary for germination is light. Please, whisper to somebody by your side. Say light. <laughs> Say there is need for water also. Ah, Jesus, 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 Jesus. When Satan comes for seeds... The plan is at this level you are still very feeble you are still very minute they can they can wrap you up very quickly the warfare will not be long 
So at the season of seeds, there will be too much angelic fights that will be happening on your behalf. Because you don't have the capacity to war by yourself. So there will be protocols of celestial hosts that will insist that although malaria came to this toddler, although they say it's jaundice, how many sicknesses? You will see very innocent children with strange names of diseases. Sometimes you give up and you see them bounce back. It is the intervention of angelic beings. They are fighting to make sure that if it is this one, you can't cut him off. Because they know that a season of consciousness will soon come where you can now start making decisions. But for now, since you cannot take any step, we will fight for you. This is why they say, be careful the way you take and respond or you push little children back. Because it says, of such is the kingdom of God. Because these ones, the attention of God's host is always around them. This is how I'm sharing. My context this night is not only infants as regarding you know infants as per age there are also people that gave their life to jesus newly and you will see unusual attention just coming you before you even pray sometimes the answer will come you will now start deceiving yourself and saying Kai, some of us are not normal there are things that we carry sometimes if i tell you my encounters with the uh, 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 as you give your life to jesus an angel will start appearing to you or don't celebrate for long a season is coming when you will go a whole year you, they will not show you anything because your curriculum has been updated now the most basic level to work with God is sight and only children work with sight there is a realm it says eyes have not seen that's level one ears have not heard level two it has not entered the hearts of men that's level three the matured ones God does not show them he does not tell them in their ear he puts an inspiration in their heart they can pick it from their heart they are so in tune with the posture of their heart they can hear the utterances of Adonai being echoed upon their soul the oracles of God is valid to them they don't need to read it burn the Bible they'll write it from their heart because it is inside he says I have written my laws on the tablets of your heart that is where they fetch the utterances of God from this is why when you begin to walk with God you will find the relationship is going inner it's not it's not going external it's joining inner it is going from outside to inner parts to deeper places of fraternity when you begin to journey a time will come you will need to become conscious before you can really associate with the people around you recently i had i had meals made and put in my freezer and it just occurred to me that i can now lock my door i can i can go for weeks I'll, not all of us are bored though. you know you nobody call you from morning till 4 p.m you say you are you are moody you say you are depressed you say what kind of lonely life is this if you have fraternized with creatures beyond this realm you will be looking for solitary places because you want to go and continue fraternizing with michael because every time he opens up himself to you you see new layers of warfare you know how to wield the sword of righteousness because every time you spend more time in the mundane, you are being changed into what you are constantly fellowshipping with. The more you stay with God. Sometimes there are many gateways to enter that realm. The word of God is the most accurate. Just open scripture. Open it. You know, we, we, we approach these things with some measures of carelessness, some measures of, you know, lack of direction about it. You open scripture and then you are looking, then your, your mind travel, only your eyes on the page. You can't go. You shall seek me and find me when you seek me with all your hearts. Ah, that baby caught what I said. You, know, you see, there are things only children know. All your heart is not available to this generation. So the first thing you will do is to deal with the distraction. All those reverberative sounds that are inside your spirit causing for distraction shut it down first how do you do that the first thing is to you see this your mobile phone it can be a blessing or a curse many people will amount to nothing and it will be that phone that cost it believe me take my word for it many people will become nothing in the agenda of god and the answer to why is on their hand that phone some of you your phone has eaten more than more than 10 years of your life is that thing in your hand and only the phone knows what he's doing to your life and on that day it will appear like this there will be a picture of a phone behind you it takes time it takes time to know God 
it takes time to touch God. The presence of God is like dew. If you stand outside when there is dew, eh, for one hour, would any dew come upon you? No. It's only the plants that tarry that night throughout the night. When you wake up in the morning, you will see something whitish upon them. It is a sign that they were on this business for like 12 hours. They, they spent the whole night contemplating on his essence. So he now rested upon them. How did you lock the door for 30 minutes? Then you came out and said, it didn't work. What can 30 minutes bring upon you? There are layers of encounter you will need. He says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. You need to dwell there, not visit. It's your dwelling place. I have made the Lord my dwelling place. Sister, you are going to need to have two addresses and you will spend time, sit down, you will spend time in one address more. The secret place is number one. Then your normal house address. Sometimes you will be in your normal house but you have gone to the secret place. Stay there. How can we even ignore the lust of this generation? You will need to be intoxicated with another reality. Because there are many products Satan will present per time. And if you are not contemplating on something superior to this world, believe me, you will fall. You will need to catch glimpses. See what the Bible said concerning Jesus. He says, for the sake of the glory that was set before him. So there was something he had seen. There was something he had contemplated on. On account of that sight, he endured the current dealing. He went through the shame, carried the cross because he had seen a glory. How comes your eye have not seen anything? That is why when Satan says compromise, you can trade your destiny for something that is mundane. I need somebody to pray for one minute wherever they are. Lord, show me. Show me the glory set before my destiny. Show me what you want to do with my life. Some of you, if you see it, you will know how to wield strength and overcome. until the word of God finds you until the word of God finds you you will be lost forever so the first criteria for seeds to be activated for the life contained inside seed it is that same thing I was telling you water water in that context is the washing of the water by the word it is the word of God that is that water number two the light of God will shine upon you that light, it is a gaze of his mercy. Suddenly you will come into a consciousness of your unworthiness and of how much you have bastardized the ordinance of God and how so in need of judgment you are. And then suddenly you will be able to appreciate the mercy that beams upon you like light. The moment you see that light, it provokes repentance because you have no capacity to repent on your own. A spirit must convict you. That convicting capacity of the spirit is casted upon a man like light. Suddenly you realize that you have been living in rebellion. Suddenly you realize that this life you are living is not in tandem with the operations of God for your life. Suddenly you realize that you have not been fair to your creator. That that realization is the measure of light that beams upon your soul. This is what is necessary for a seed to germinate. Can I share something with you? In basic biology, they will tell you the presence of microbes is also a very important criteria. <laughs> you know, if I stay on this germinating thing, I will now tell us that I will continue next week, which I know I will not continue. In the season of germination, if you are writing, please sit down. God bless you. In the season of germination, there are three things you must be prepared to contend with. Number one, fear. Number two, doubt. And number three, laziness. Please, it will make sense. Just be following me. The moment a seed is planted, that seed can be a vision. That seed can be a ministry. That seed can be a multi-billion dollar company. Every great thing that ever happened was once an idea. And at that level of a seed, it's like an idea. 
an idea that just crossed your heart, an inspiration you contemplated on, something you just thought about and said, but I can do this thing. It is like a seed in this level. And it is easy to lose seeds because it is not so concrete yet. So you can lose ideas. The killers of that particular season is what I'm sharing with you. Number one, fear. Many things have entered the hearts of men. He says there is a spirit in man. The inspiration of the almighty spirit will give that spirit understanding. So if God wants to bless you, he will quicken an inspiration in your soul. When that inspiration enters, there are things that have capacity to kill that visitation of God. Number one is fear. Every time God speaks to you, he is speaking from his capacity, not your capacity. And so when God tells you to do some things, it will look like, who am I? Those, those will be the question. Hi. Even when God send angels to go and deliver messages to people, the first thing they will start asking is doubt. Because it's too high. How can you be in television? Born into a family struggling to just feed living from hand to mouth from every, every all the while you have known yourself that has been the experience and suddenly god is whispering to you that you are going to become the ceo of a multi-billion dollar company write write the name down and he gave you a name and you refuse to write it because when you look at yourself versus that particular dream versus that particular inspiration it does not match let me let me tell you something you don't know the quality of what is in the seed until it germinates Sometimes you will see a small seed. When it starts growing, you will see a tree where birds will come and find shelter. Even mankind will sit under. How did it start? It was once a very tiny seed. When you are at the level of seed, it is easy to look down on your capacity. It's easy to conclude that you will not amount to much. But inside that seed is the culture, the nature of greatness domiciled on your inside. This is why I was telling us earlier on that you can never write off any man. You know why? The treasure that God gave to us, it is inside. It is in eating vessel. You will need to unlock it. And part of the ways to unlock it is by this technology I'm sharing with you. The first thing that must happen to a seed, if it must live up to the expectation of the one who planted it, is that it must die. All seeds must die before they come alive. Until a corn of wheat falls to the ground and die. If it does not die, it will abide alone. But if it dies... He says it will spring forth bearing much fruit. First criterion for that season of seeds, planting season, is that all men are required to die. You know what you will do? The moment you open your eye, you will realize that hi, in your family, there is this, there is this particular pattern, this particular pathway everybody it's like a young man who is into Yahoo. He is an internet fraudster. And so he took it upon himself to teach his siblings. So it became a family business. And then the devil put a horn, a horn upon their head so that they will become envoys and ambassadors of that corrupted path. So if you look at them from afar, you will say, but how can you say this to know they pay? When they stand near you, when you perceive their perfume and you see the cars they're driving, you will say, but really, is God fair? Why would God say we should not do this? And the more they are basking, living as though they are living the best of their lives. Can I share something with you? Come on now. Can I share something with you? You will need to follow the story of the wicked long enough. That's the only way you will learn the moral lesson. It was a great teacher that said, I passed in the morning and I saw the wicked basking under the sun in glory and in splendor. He says, but when I return in the evening, he had withered. He was no more. It is the end. It is the end. Actually, you see, this thing, this thing I'm sharing with you now, it has the capacity to change your tomorrow. Because some of you, your decision making will be impacted by truths like this. The, the, in fact, the reason for spiritual knowledge is not just for revelatory purpose. It's to inform your decision making. So that going forward, your steps will be guided by the light you have been fortified with. You will no longer take steps that is out of ignorance because you know better. The first criteria for every seed, because all of us, we are the seeds of God. He says, yet I had planted you. Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 21, I believe. Yet I had planted thee holy, a noble vine, a right seed. 
please tell yourself I'm a right seed I'm a right seed come on say it again like you mean it I'm a right seed I carry the possibilities of God on my inside he says that is the seed planted that's the seed planted I don't care the storyline from your background I don't care what does not work in your family you are a right seed none of these things came with me have you two read he says you have heard before that the fathers ate sour grapes and the teeth of the children huh he says but henceforth every man will bear his own iniquity so you will no longer have that parable in Israel where the sin of a generation is, is being impacting on another innocent people. This is how you disassociate yourself from storylines you don't like. You are looking around, you are seeing the devil reminding you that, but remember where you are coming from. Remember everybody's life there. I've been called out. I've been called out. He has called me out of every language, every tribe, every tongue, every people. I am a chosen generation. A royal priesthood I am separated tell yourself these things sometimes you look at your body and you see a sickness that was in your father a sickness that was in your grandfather there is only one way to escape that thing you disassociate by spiritual relation and say I'm not a part of this thing because I belong to a spiritual tribe I belong to a spiritual lineage I am born of God he says ye are God since I'm 82 all of you are children of the most high God so gods cannot give birth to all kinds of issues with diseases here and there you can insist until that nature comes and the life that is in God is eternal life and he has brought that life to us through Jesus Christ our Lord I have eternal life tell yourself these things oh see you see you see the way I say that's why <laughs> let me tell you one truth I was myself more than 10 times I have eternal life the life of God is in me I do these things to carry a consciousness anytime the devil comes to whisper I know his voice anything that is not consistent with the written word concerning my life I fight it with what was written I have eternal life the life of God is on my inside I am a God because I'm a child of God there is no impossibility before me I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world as big as the world is what is in me is greater than them tell yourself these things you, you sense fear you don't know why you just I, I don't know why I just wake up with one kind of restlessness don't don't be quiet on that day that restlessness it is a posture your spirit is reacting to a news because your spirit travel faster than the, your other being your spirit knows things that your brain don't know don't wait until your brain have a logical conclusion of what the devil is planning the moment you sense and these are part of the languages of the spirit part of the language of the spirit is restlessness you can know that there is something the spirit is communicating the only way for your body to understand it is your body will enter a restless mode it's a language something is brewing in the world of spirit there is a clash of war in that day it's not time to eat breakfast you two go on war quickly you see, one, 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 one thing you will do is that the moment you begin to observe that God gives you the opportunity to sense the posture of your spirit, know, know that the synchronization is beginning to happen. Has anybody here woken up from sleep with prayer before? Uh, I, know, I, I, I know it's not everybody. So There are many people who are, who are dead spiritually. So, if you have woken up with prayer before, your spirit was praying. When he was praying, he was praying. So he, he needed the prayer to be when two or three are gathered. So he had to bring the, the other corporate members to come and join it quickly. There is there's something strong that it was warring with. But it needed other, other members to join this matter quick. That, that was why. You were praying. Your spirit has capacity to initiate encounters that your body don't know of. There are days where a being will appear to you and say, I have heard your cry. Then you will say, which cry? When did I cry? It was your spirit that groaned. Making intercession that cannot be uttered. Because your spirit and the Holy Ghost has become one. The utterances of the Holy Ghost has become the sound of your own spirit. So your spirit can ask for things that your mouth never asks for. And suddenly you will see it walk into your life. You will not know how. You see, there are many of us sitting here. Sometimes we will be in church like this and we raise a prayer. And you are praying sometimes your mind leaves the prayer and only your mouth did some things you didn't know the petitions your spirit submitted you then walk out of the meeting 
and things you don't remember praying for begins to add up it is that your spirit has capacity to initiate initiate encounters that your brain has no idea of until man dies until a corn of wheat falls to the ground and die you will never unlock the narrative of god for your life so we all arrive time as seeds until that seed falls to the ground and die it is at salvation that you lay your life down because this particular seed you will never be planted by force you will willingly cast yourself down if you are planted by force it will never yield anything god will not forcefully bury you it is you that will make yourself available and say i abandon my own will my own plans my own aspiration maybe in your family there is a particular part everybody takes everybody takes that part and it looks sensible if you want to prosecute the will of god for your life you will need to hear the utterances of god only him who has made you can tell you the meaning of your life and when you isolate that will you journey with it blindly not too many people can take that blind step following god because it looks very risky very dangerous that's why i'm saying that in the season of planting what you will overcome is fear and doubt and laziness these three things fear doubt and laziness the fear of the unknown what if it does not work what if this plan what if this vision the moment god gives you an idea is a seed it has to be planted that planting time is when god god detaches every other thing that has capacity of distracting you then you enter that path and journey holy i don't want to stay on this for too long because time is not on our side season number two the season of growth the season of growth i think it is important i add one point before i move from here i'm going to try to run through it now and see how much we can cover in the planting season part of the things you will observe is that once god plants satan will plant the bible says the kingdom of god is as unto a man that plants good seed in his vineyard and why men slept the enemy came and planted so in that planting season satan will also cast his own seeds quickly because he wants to contend for the nutrient in the land he wants to make sure and there's something about weeds weeds are very aggressive weeds are very virulent and so a weed is a very aggressive plant if you are not careful the weed will choke the main plant and this is why people go to uproot weed once they have planted their crops they go and do weeding as a procedure in agriculture that weeding process is to make sure the weed does not choke the main plant from attaining its true potential unfortunately for our own case they did not weed when the devil planted the angels came in the morning and saw that good seeds are growing weeds are also growing they say good master do we go and remove this weed as it is supposed to be he said no because in the process of removing weeds one or two or few of us might be removed by mistake that is how precious your soul is to god he is not willing to take risks on one person so he said allow them all to grow together so what it means is that you are going to grow under a very harsh competitive environment weeds are growing by your side this is why for a simple job interview somebody comes with three charm on his waist two charm in his wrist another charm in his chest how many charm for just one job then you you came with your with your epileptic christian life up today down tomorrow he now came and say hallelujah <laughs> hey you have he said i sent you as sheep among wolves this is the hostile environment you have been sent to manifest so any of us that manifested you must be a brutally violent man it means you were able to domesticate the violence of wolves you led the pack you became a leader even among aggression it's not possible to be smear smear just that very very lukewarm kind of person and think you amount to anything in this world he says you are either hot or cold i prefer you to be cold so that we know how to help you one very lukewarm christian the only time he communes with god is when we come for an akazu friday to friday encounter that is all what do you think you can do like that how many days of the week 
do you have many contentions with other plants who are piping from the economy that was made available for the sons of the kingdom but they are swindling it he says i see another wickedness under the sun princes are walking on their feet while servants are riding horses this is what will happen to you when you don't realize yet that there is a kind of posture that is necessary to prevail in this world he says as a good soldier endure hardship because they have already told you that if you must win you must operate with the mindset of a soldier there is no man that worries that entangled himself with the affairs of this world so that he may please him who has called him to be a good soldier so the question is listen see see what the bible says it says for we wrestle it didn't say we shall wrestle it didn't say we will wrestle it didn't say war will come it said you are born into war we wrestle now that you already know that there is war they say no man that worries entangled himself with their you are distracted you are distracted the moment you enter that posture you will discern satan movement every time the reason is that satan is always disguising as though he is not real so people start saying please let's let's stop all this over over spirituality there is nothing like over spirituality press spirituality to the highest you can press it the the best the best thing is to be over spiritual be so spiritual now they come and water down your faith and say, Kai, me, I like, I like your own kind of Christianity. You are such a balanced person. You touch us more, you touch us more. This is what life is. Then you smile. You smile and say, well, it's, it's maturity in the spirit. You know, some of us have been, are you serious? You need to be brutal. The Bible says, until your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes. You know how righteous they are? They have a, a dress code. Because their righteousness have to flow into physical. It's not only God that should look at how, how pure they are. Men must also be witnesses. So they have long white robes as their dress code. Hi. And their walking step is like celestial creatures. They don't pray until people are gathered. And their prayer is only at marketplaces. And they, they make sure that when they want to pray, they pray with so much vocabulary. You, you even forget where they said in Jesus' name. Because the English became too much. A Pharisee was praying. Jesus said, come, come, let me show you guys something. He brought his disciples and showed them practical. Two people were praying. Another man came and said, Lord, I'm not worthy to stand before you. But this opportunity I have. Thank you for giving me this chance. Look upon me with mercy. Jesus said, did you see that? They said, yes. He took them to another, another pompous man with a white robe. He says, Lord, I thank you I'm not as filthy as this person who is praying by my side here. Thank you because... In the cadres of purity, there are rankings. And thank you for the celestial creatures that I fraternize with. Ah, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, elder brother Jesus. <laughs> Somebody or the other day was preaching. He was teaching, he was teaching. He now said, brother Jesus knows me. I say, brother Jesus, brother Jesus. This is the way of Pharisees. They want to show you that there is something they have struck with God that is not available to the common man. They want you to know that the price they paid, that you, you cannot touch it till you die. So just give up. They want you to know that in, in their generation, there are only few of them. And that it will, it will be hard for God to find this type. A Pharisee will talk about himself from beginning till the end. Because the totality of glory for the Pharisee is unto himself. Jesus says they have their reward. Because they do these things to be seen of men. This is their motive. Everything they are doing is to make an impression. You know what? We have actually Pharisees in the body of Christ very active it doesn't take long to discern them it's an ancient spirit it has been on ground so it's not, it didn't start now when you see a man so conscious he does not have a secret life with Jesus he does not live in tandem with the laws of God but he needs to make a, a public show an appearance so that people there are some of you here you don't have any pair of jeans because for you jeans is the garment of the world but your heart is so, so, so corrupted, so polluted, so, so, so defiled. You are a Pharisee. You are not with God. The totality of everything you are doing is for appearances. The kingdom is far from you. There are some of you, your skirt is touching your ankle here. All your skirt is packing dust on the ground. 
but the layer of filthiness in your heart. Hi. You are a fraud in the world of spirits. There are EFCC officials of the world of spirits looking for you because you, you, are, you, are, you are parading yourself as something you are not. And you are attracting passers-by who are hungry for the bread of life. When they come under you, there is no fruit. Because you have a form, a form, an appearance. This is what Satan is doing to this generation. Everybody now have apostolic utterances. Call a very young brother and say, come and lead prayer. Uh, let's, I, don't, I don't want to say it. Let's angulate our receptacles to heaven and pipe from the sequences of the immortals. Wait, what you want to say is, let us pray. When you now say all this long thing, people now say, wow, he's deep. God, did you hear that rod of apostolic utterance? Then he will now come down with a walking step like this. You see, let me tell you one truth. Spirits know you. They know who you are. In the day of war, they will laugh at you. You will stand like a pillar of truth among men. In the day of war, your words will lack weight because they know that you are a man of hidden compromise. You don't have the standing. He says you will judge disobedience when your obedience is complete. And God sees in secret. Hi. I love this song. Nasame haske bazansa ke koma gurindu hoba Nasame haske bazansa ke haske 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 Listen. Once upon a time, we were all in the in the radar, all under the canopy of darkness. We didn't know what we were doing. We didn't even know if there will be hope, if there is any inheritance for us among those who are called according to God. But the moment God translated us from the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous light, we found a new identity. Now people say we are proud because we know who we are. There is a way you are conscious of who you are. You can't go and sit down and be gisting with people who don't know where they are going to. They just gather from morning till night playing draft. Playing what? You play first round, second round, you look at time, it's 6 p.m. I just wasted, I just wasted 12 hours of my destiny. No. There's something that happened on campus that still pains me till today. There's this friend of mine, he was, he was, he was treating dry cough. He was treating, treating dry, dry cough. So they prescribed a particular um, cough syrup for him. So I came back from the class, I saw him, he put the cough syrup small in one small part of the spoon and lick it. I said, you, you that you are coughing like this, do you think this small thing you do can, can solve anything? Put it well in the spoon. He said that if he put this thing in that small cup, if he put it for me and I drink it, that I will not know myself for, for one day. When I heard this thing, you know, as a man, you say, me? You think my head is soft? I will not know myself for one day? It's a lie. The brother carried the cough syrup and poured inside that small cup, that white small cup. Small something, you know. And now, I drank it one hand like as though it's nothing. It was that, that, that drinking, that was the last thing I remembered. <laughs> I slept, I slept, listen, I'm very serious, pay attention. I slept from that time, I woke up the next day. So when I now check the, the number of hours that have been missing in my destiny, unaccounted for. So I now imagine what happens to, to drunkards. You, you are not present, oh. You, you will come here, the moment you come here small, you will run and go and high again and journey back to your imaginary world. And there's, there's a realm, a realm of drunkenness where pe the people now become super respectful. You just see an old man, he will see you and say, guess what? 
I say, where, where is this one living? <laughs> you and him are not in the same realm. In, in that realm, there's... Ah, that, they, eating Anna, Anna, come and taku. There's one man, on once, once he drinks, he must pocket one hand. That is, he will become so self-conscious. Catching reps. Ah. Alcohol is a mockout. It's not the way of kings. He said, oh Lemuel, oh Lemuel, hear the advice of your mother. See, the way of wine is not the way of kings. Because if you drink, you will abuse judgment. You will not be rational. You cannot make quality decisions. You will abuse the throne if you continue. People say, where is he written in the Bible? I, I, I just showed you one. There's somebody sitting here, you say, me, I they control myself when I drink. I have good news for you. The, the devil is planning to hold your hand like this and be working with you. One of these days, you, you will take one bottle, it will not take you to that realm again. It will need to be two. Then when you exhaust capacity of two, until you take three before you can touch that realm. So two can no longer do the work. Please whisper to that person, you are growing spiritually. Let me tell you how the story will end. One, one day, they will now bring you back on a wheelbarrow. <laughs> it is at that point, you start, you will drink until, you will drink until you pass out. Then they will bring your lifeless body and drop for a helpless wife who never knew what she married. I'm repeating it again for the brothers here. The brothers here. Stay away from strong drink. There is a high in the Holy Ghost. The reason why you are not touching it is because you don't want to take that wine. If you look at me, you will know that there is a joy I have that is only in the Holy Ghost. It's that joy people who drink are looking for. It's, a, it's called the merriment of heart. It's that merriment they are looking for. Now, you, there's a merriment that is in the Holy Ghost. Stay there. Sometimes I wake up from sleep and the Holy Ghost quicken one song in my heart. That song is high. It's high. It's equivalent to your, your own, your, which would drink, your, your Heineken. Eh? <laughs> the moment I'm hearing the song inside me, if my lip just mistakenly sing the song, ah, we're intoxicated. Sometimes it's one line, we'll be repeating it, one line. And ah, the high will be increasing. Something happened in the hall yesterday. Yesterday, something happened in the new center. I and the thing, the thing got me so restless. So I was it yesterday, the day before yesterday. I now ran to the worship team who were there. I said, Give me, just give me a sound that can cheer me up. So they played this Nasa Muhaske Mazansa Kekoma Burindu Hova. I said, What song is this? Where do you pipe this thing from? When I was about to celebrate the song, and I heard the other part. Haske, haske, oh, haske, oh, haske, oh. Me, that my face was angry just now. There was a joy from inside. I knew, I knew that we were designed to live from inside out. There is something that powers your corporate persona, it starts from inside. The sweetest part of that song, you have not sang it. Is a li 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 li, a li 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 masoina chine keso. A li 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 li, a li 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 masoina chine keso. A li 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 li, oh, a li 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 masoina chine keso. Sake coma, wouldn't do bad. Nasami has care. 
listen. 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 Please, if you can. When you leave this meeting and you go back home, you are going to see another reality waiting to confront you, to remind you of the many things that are not working. Your response is one: I have found the light. You know what? You know what Job said. You know what Job said. He says, "Through thy light, I walk through darkness." There is a light kindled on your inside. That light is responsible for your joy. There is a joy you have that the world cannot give. It is with that joy that you fetch from the well of salvation. He says, "With joy you draw from the well of salvation." What is the well of salvation? Is the bounty, the bounty of the new life. Everything salvation secured, you can touch it through joy. If the devil can take joy away from your life, he have shut you out of the bounties of salvation. No matter what salvation secured for you, without joy, you can't touch it. Joy is like booga. It is what you use to fetch. There are many people that have been moody for a long time. The garment of heaviness has been on you. Moody, moody. Sometimes you wake up from sleep, the first thing is hissing. You just wake up and do Kai. Moody is a garment. Oh, I have good news for somebody. Isaiah chapter 61, very quickly. Isaiah 61, from verse 1. Aske o, aske aske o, aske o, aske o. Ai li 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 li, ai li 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 li, masohi na shineke so. Ai li 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 li, ai li 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 li, mai konata shineke. Listen, I want you to personalize this scripture. Don't, don't read it like it was talking to somebody else. See yourself as what this prophecy has come to be fulfilled through. Everybody, let's read at the count of two. One, two, go. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the broken hearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison to them that are bound. Next verse, quickly. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that more. Next verse. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give unto them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I am a tree of righteousness. I am the planting of the Lord. Nothing can make me unfruitful. Nothing can make me unfruitful. I am the planting of the Lord. I am the planting of the Lord. I am like a tree planted by the rivers of waters. Go ahead and prophesy over your life. Nasami haske bazan sake koma burindo hoba. Nasami haske bazan sake koma burindo hoba. Nasami haske nasami haske bazan sake koma burindo hoba. Nasami haske nasami haske. Aske, 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 a
Askeho, 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 Asami haske, kazan sake kuma, kore kuma. Asami haske, asami haske, kazan sake kuma, kore kuma. Listen, time is not on our side, so I will stop here today. I give you five minutes to do business with destiny now everything that is causing for lack of fruitfulness everything that has made me not to operate in the order of my ordination every stony ground is broken every thorn is uprooted everything making me unfruitful righteously everything challenging my capacity to rise Launched you and not before.